One of the main reasons for employing a key chain is to allow us to more efficiently change keys or what's referred to as rotate the keys. What we want to do right now is take this opportunity to entertain how we can modify our key chain to go through this process in the context of EIGRP. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to start on R22. And on R22 what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a configuration that's going to allow me to add a second key. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go config T. Actually, let's take a look at our keychain. Show keychain. And we see that we have key one on a keychain called EIGRP off, EIGRP underscore off. So what I want to do is I'm going to add a new key. So config T, keychain, EIGRP underscore off. And then I want to add key two. Now by adding key two, I'm going to set up a key string that says key dash string is going to be Cisco, all in lowercase. Now, at first blush, a lot of people think that immediately, since I don't have this key configured on the other side, that my link is going to go down. But that's not going to be the case. Let's take a look at this. <clears throat> Show key chain. Now, what we see here is we have the two keys, but look at the information. It's going to have a, a, a always accept and an always send. It's valid, and it's valid forever. So it's going to be, it's never going to actually expire. That's where we're going to want to come in and start playing with around with some timers. But there's another question that I want to ask. Right now I'm going to say debug EIGRP packet. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to R2. And on R2, I'm going to modify my keychain. Config T, do show key space chain. And I'll see I've got the one keychain with one key. Let's go ahead and create another one. We need to do key space chain, EIGRP underscore off, key two, key string. We said we were going to make it Cisco all lowercase. Now, notice our link didn't go down, our link didn't rotate, our link didn't change. So let's now see what's happening on R22 when we start looking at this EIGRP information. I'm going to you all this because what I want to look at is this information right here. Received a packet with the message digest key of one. So we're still using key one even though I configured key two. I mean at first blush I always thought that if I can configure key two and key two matched on both sides we would begin using or continue to start using the most recent key. But in this instance it hasn't toggled over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat my debug and I'm going to go back over to R2 and I'm going to shut the link down and see if I can force it to use the new key. Interface, serial, to zero, shut. And that's going to kill my link. All right, now if I roll over here to R22, I should see the fact that that link has gone down. Actually, I'm only receiving update information. Let's see. Do show. Show. E I P E I G R P neighbors. So I've only peered with two now since, but the problem is, is the, the console just came up with so much information so fast that I couldn't use it. Now, when we go start looking at this, let's go back over to R2, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that interface back up. No shut. And let's see if that affects it. Let's cut over to R22, and what we're going to find out here is, is once our interface comes back up, which it should have automatically done, did, the thing is, is notice that we're, I'm going to go ahead and you all this, and we're still using key one. So the question is, is how do I rotate my key? Well, I have to rotate my key by telling EIGRP when it's no longer valid to use that key. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to my keychain. Keychain, EIGRP underscore off. And once I'm under, inside of key one, I can set up a send and a receive lifetime. So my send lifetime is going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And I'm going to say that we will set this up to where it was going to be January 1st of 2014, this year. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, my key needs to, I need to actually stop sending this key, and I need to define the time at which I'm going to stop sending it. And what, uh, the time at which I'm going to stop sending it is going to be yesterday. So right now, let's see, January, no, we'll go 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, let's say 0, 5, 0, 0. 
and I'm gonna say July and let's see today is the 25th so I'll say July the 24th 2014 now that tells me when I've stopped sending it but when do I want to stop accepting it well notice right here it tells me I've lost my neighbor relationship and my neighborship has come back up but now what we want to find out is why or how my neighborship has come back up so let's go ahead exit look at what we've done show key chain and what we can see here is, is all I did was it, uh, configure and accept lifetime I left it default and I'm just saying my send lifetime I have said I'm no longer going to send this key as of yesterday now the interesting point here is a show IP E I G R P neighbors I do have a peering now I've got a peering with R3 and R2 now when we start looking at how this is set up let's see here let's take a look at what's going on on R2 well let's see we've got our new adjacency exit show IP E I G R P neighbors show key chain well let's look and see what we've got here I have my IP expert key I have my Cisco key but now what I want to do is I want to say a debug IP not debug IP but debug EIGRP packet and let's see what happens now I'm gonna take myself out of the equation and let's see if we can learn any information with regard to this key value so you all enter I just killed the debug but if I scroll up right now I see I received a packet with MD5 authentication key ID of 2 so in order to be able to rotate the keys all I have to do is decide when I want to stop sending it and when I want to stop accept accepting it now what I'll normally do in a live environment when I do this which is very rare to be perfectly honest is is that I will actually have my accept window a little bit longer so I'll accept it for a little bit longer than I stop sending it to ensure that I definitely have an overlap the other thing that I mentioned was is that in the context of making certain that all of this is operational another command you may want to do is going to be show clock because you want to make certain that our time synchronization and our date are the same on all of our devices by virtue of the fact that this is a virtualized environment virtualized by virtue of the fact that it's virtualized now I'm starting to sound like a marketing guy but the main thing here is that since it's running on this Linux device that I'm using to emulate all of my hardware I'm using the system clock so all of my devices are going to have the exact same time something you ordinarily wouldn't have in the confines of a routing environment using live equipment however to be able to bypass that situation you'd want to use something like NTP network time protocol which is something that we're going to talk about when we start looking at iOS and IP services so this wraps up our conversation with regard to how to rotate your keys, and I'll see you guys in the next video.